Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, uh, this is isothermal titration calorimeter. So, I'll give a brief introduction to this device. So, this is used for study the binding between the sample and the ligand you want to test with. Usually, in our case, it's usually CNC or protein or other samples. And then, if you want to bind it with either a dye or some metal ions, you can use ITC to measure the the entropy change during the binding reaction. So to use ITC, first you need to just close this. Yeah. First, so this is the I'll close this window. Close this window. So this is the software you will need to use. So the second one, this VPV or 2000, this software is used together with the ITC device. Uh, when the device is on, this software has to be on with the device. Okay. So before you start a titration, the first thing you're going to do, I'll talk about this later. You can handle this later. So before you're going to use ITC, the first thing you need to do is to clean it to make sure the sample cell is clean and the syringe is clean. So when all these are clean, you can start to do an experiment. So the way to clean the ITC is to use this thermal vac the vacuum pump. The vacuum pump, this is to pump vacuum and then use this this kind of uh, kind of a plug with needle. This will flush the solution or the water you need to uh, what you want to use to wash the ITC cell, flush it into the cell and then draw it into this waste this waste container. It's already full, so I'll I'll just uh, for one second. Okay now it's empty. So connect connect this side to there's a I, I draw an arrow here. This is the vacuum vacuum pump. Here, connect this to this. And then plug plug it here. And then put the needle into the cell. Before that you it's better to wash it. Like if there's some like dust or something on the needle, it's better to wash it. Wipe it. And then gently push this into the sample cell. You can you can see uh, from this inside here. There are two two cells, one sample cell and the uh, reference cell. The sample cell is the big one with a funnel, with a funnel like thing on the top. And you can see the black hole there. That's the sample cell. Okay. So gently, gently push this needle. Gently put put it into the sample cell, and then press it down. So, so that's it for the cleaning. After after you're doing so, so this this one is the solution you want to use to clean the cell. Sometimes, usually we clean it first with the with the surfactant solution, like 10 to 20 percent surfactant solution. Put it here, make a solution, put it here, and then they have already washed it with that. So now I just put some water. This is millikil water, and then. And then we use water to flush the cell, sample cell, like this. So now it's all, all connected, the water to sample cell and to the waste waste flask. So now it's to, let's just push the vacuum pump to the right side. To the right side one time is to turn it on for like around five minutes. It will stop after five minutes. So push it one time to the right. It lasts five minutes. If you want it to keep running, for example, you have a lot of water here, you need to push it to the left. One time to the right and then to the left. It will like keep running for the rest of the time, okay? So for now, you have already, uh, the last student who are using this have already cleaned it. So I'm not going to continue to uh, flush it with water. So I, I'm just doing an example to show you how to do it. So I'll just press it to the right side one more time it will stop okay and then after the stop uh, just unplug here and then unplug here and pull it out gently and then so they, they should put it into into this one just to st store it here so just uh, wonder I'll just put everything inside okay so yeah so now it's done. Just wash it. 
so again, slowly, gently take out the syringe. Use both hands, slowly move it. Then put it on here. So, the way you clean the syringe is the way, same way you fill with fill the syringe. So usually we will clean it with surfactant solution and then with water. In, in this case, because it's only water inside, I'll just clean it with water. Find, find the tip and add the cleaning solution inside. And then and then still still put it here. Put it in first. Put the needle in. And then find the filling port. Connect the port with the plastic syringe. Okay, connect it. And then you can see now the plug is not in here. The plug is all the way down here all the way down here because it, it kind of inject the solution inside into the sample cell so the plug is all the way down here so at, at this time just click the open open field port open field port and you will see the the plug going up and the port will be open after the port is open you just draw the water out to flush flush the needle with water you can hold usually what i do is i hold one hand with with the squeeze bottle and one hand with the plastic syringe so now you can see, you can see now the port is up here, it's water inside. Sometimes it will be your sample or the one of the other solution inside. And then <coughs> it's water down here. Now what I do is I just I just draw the water and then add, add water in here at the same time. So it, it basically is flush, flush the inside of this syringe, injection syringe with water. Just add water, add water, add water, and then draw it from the plastic syringe. And then after it, this is filled, just close, close fill port. And then uh, be careful not to not to like input any like inject any water from the from the injection uh, from this port. Okay, just remove it and then put the water into the waste. Sometimes it's the surfactant solution you use to clean the clean the surge and then and then repeat just to connect here and then draw the water up and add water here and then flush it with water. Sometimes if if the filling port if the, if you can see contaminations at this at this and here. If you see contamination at this white plug, what you need to do is you need to disassemble the Disassemble the injection syringe. So the way is the first first step: open field port, remove all the water or or cleaning agent inside the syringe. Just draw it out, remove everything. So now it's clean. Now it's empty. It's empty in here. So when it's empty, you can disassemble disassemble the syringe. So there's a metal ring, like kind of metal ring here. Just uh, unscrew this gently. And s slowly like separate them apart. So now you have the upper part and the lower part. The upper part is connected to ITC. Just don't like drag, drag this one. Now you can see the plug, and then the plug is here. If there's contaminations on here, you can clean it with the, the surfactant and water. Just to put a, put a waste, waste beaker here and then just clean it. Sometimes you will need to wipe it with the surfactant or, or something for else. Just wipe it, clean it and leave it here. And for this one, if there's contamination inside this, I don't know if it's uh, glass or plastic, so in, inside this this thing, you will need to use put some cleaning solution in there and use this. This is kind of a kind of like a beaker brush. It's kind of a brush. There's a 
the brush on the top. Just use this brush to put it inside here because it's dirty. I don't want to like contaminate this, so I'm not going to put it in. Just put it in here and with the uh, surfactant solution inside and just brush it. And basically it will clean up all the contaminations inside here. So I'll just leave it back, put it, put it back in here, okay? Yeah, so that's it. That's how to clean the, clean the serum. And then we'll assemble, when you assemble it, just put it back the same way you separate them. Put it back and then screw the, the whole ring. Yep. Okay. Okay, that's it. After after all the after you wash it, it's just leave it at the open position. And uh, yeah. The so if you want to run an experiment, there are two cells you, you want to there are two things you want to fill. First, the sample cell. This cell is for your sample, and I already showed you there are two cells: one reference cell and a sample cell inside. So what you want to do is to empty the water in the sample cell, and then fill it fill it with your sample. Okay. So the volume of the sample cell, it, it's a coin-shaped sample cell. The volume is around 1.5 to 1.7 milliliter. So that's why we use a 2.5 milliliter. It's a glass syringe. And then to, we want to draw like around two milliliter of liquid, which is your sample, and then put it into the sample cell. So this, this needle, you have to wash it first. I think they already did, but uh, I'll yeah. also just uh, flush it with, with uh, millicule water. This is millicule water. And then just wash it one more time with water. Just wash it a few times, okay? So all the water we use in ITC experiments are the millipore water. So it's filtered, so it's super clean. So we don't want any kind of uh, impurities to mess up with the results. So what I'm trying to do now is to remove the remaining water from the, from the wash inside the sample cell. What I do is to put the needle, you use two, both hands. One hand you handle the needle and the other one you just uh, hold the syringe and slowly, slowly push it down, slowly push it down until you hit the bottom. Okay, now it's, now it's at the bottom. I can see it's, it's on the bottom. Don't scratch the bottom, okay? It will like damage the equipment. When you, when you hit the, touch the bottom, lift up a little bit and then draw the water out. This is also how you take out the sample after you finish your experiment. Okay, and put this into the waste. It's only water in there because I, I just washed it. So it's clean. So, okay, now we can continue to with uh, loading the sample. So from, for today, I will just use water as the sample. So grab one of, one of this tip. This is used for, uh, for your sample and, and the sample inside the syringe. So I was just just wash it with the milk water because sometimes it will have some like dust in there just just wash it to make sure after you wash it you can use the dry dry air to just kind of clean the water inside And then load your sample. In this case, it's water. Load like 
two thirds of the volume in this in this tip. You don't want to load it too high because if you load it too much water, uh, when we degas it with the vacuum uh, with the thermal vac, it will like kind of, kind of come out the pop out of the liquid will. So next step is connect connect this one to connect this end still to this arrow small small arrow here and then arrow here okay it's fine <coughs> and then just uh, screw the, the lock this vacuum lock if it's tight and then it push this like it's around for like five minutes so after five minutes the water inside will be degassed so the gas in the water will come out and then and then you can so it won't create air bubbles inside the sample cell because sometimes when you run the experiment you will need to heat heat the sample and then if you have gas inside the sample cell it will come up with like uh, air bubbles and then it will like uh, have some errors on your uh, experiment data so i'm not going to run it for like five minutes but usually you should run it at least like maybe 10 minutes five minutes to 10 minutes I'm not going to run uh, for that long. I'll just take it out. If you run it after five minutes, sometimes you will see there are like small air bubbles inside. Small air bubbles inside. It's okay. Just small air bubbles inside. So usually, uh, when I how I do it is I just use the the, the uh, water bath sonic Oh. Just use the sonication to get rid of the air bubbles. And then, this is your sample. You have already degassed it and already cleared the air bubbles. Use this, put it, put it somewhere flat, okay? And use this, this needle to, to draw your sample into the sample cell. So first, just to make sure it's, it's dry and clean here, just to remove the, some, there may be some water inside, but just to remove it. Okay, so if, if it's dry and clean, again, use the, like, like the same technique you use for a sample cell, just put it down gently. This is also how you do in the sample cell, put it down gently to the bottom, and then lift up a little bit, and then draw the solution to, into the syringe. should be do it slow otherwise there will be air bubbles inside the syringe and you don't want that the volume you need is actually around 1.6 to 1.7 milliliters but you will need to load for two milliliters as if your volume two milliliters okay and then take it out again find the sample cell and then Gently put it down. Gently put it down to the bottom. Okay, now I touch the bottom, but don't scratch it. Just touch it and then lift, lift it up a little bit. Lift up the needle a little bit and then push it down. You will need to push it all the way down un until you see the liquid coming up to the funnel there's a white funnel inside now I'll just just wait wait a second I'll show So, so I don't know if, if you can see this. So now you can, but you can see it, see it right? Mm -hmm. So the water has coming up. So you can see there's liquid in the white funnel, which means it's already filled inside the sample cell. Okay, so the next thing you do is to draw it out slowly, 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 and then remove the remaining water in the, in the white funnel on the top of the sample cell. So just, now, now there's water, water on the, this white funnel, and then just, just draw the water out in the funnel with your, 
with your syringe. Okay? Okay, and then put the remaining water in the waste bigger. So now 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 you you cannot see the liquid in the funnel, but you know the sample cell is already filled with your sample. Right? Get it? Okay. So put it here and now it will change the temperature to the uh, to the temperature you set for this experiment. For example, here the, the cell temperature is 25. It's 25 Celsius. 20, 25 Celsius. It will kind of begin to heat the heat the cell to 25. And now, meantime, we can uh, fill the this uh, syringe, the injection syringe. The syringe. Okay. So you, you can come. I'll use the same tip because it's water. But usually, when you do this step, you will. Get a, a new tip, get a new tip from here, but still we just use water and we're using water for this one, so I'm not going to change another tip. So just again, just uh, add water into the, in the cell and then again, repeat the process for degassing and then go to the sonication to re remove the air bubbles. And then for this case, because the, the volume of this syringe is around 270 to 280, uh, microliters which is a very small volume so actually you only need very small amount of this but I recommend to fill half of the cell so that you can have excess amount of uh, liquid and the, of the solution so if even if there is some maybe a little water droplet like remaining in the top of this port it will not affect the, the concentration of your solution in, inside here but usually you will, you will keep it dry and uh, clean before you run the before you run the experiment okay So the way to uh, to fill the syringe is the same way you wash the syringe. Oh, I haven't told how you wash the syringe. So what you do now is okay, get from here, like like there, here. There's a white plug. There's a white plug over here. Now it's on the open position. The open position is the 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 metal the metal tube on the side is the the filling port that you draw the uh, you draw the solution out and now this white plug is on the open position so you can draw the uh, draw the water out from the syringe and also fill the syringe so i'm going to change the position here when you're doing the experiment the position is closed you, you can still film that this this is on the control panel so when i close the when i close the port it's like this so this is the closed position position so at this position, I cannot draw the solution into my syringe. And then I again, put it to open, open position. You can see now, it, now it's open, right? When it's on the open position, you can do the wash and you can do filling your syringe. So now we're filling our syringe. Just connect the tube to the metal port here. This side is connected, and then we have water inside here. There's a okay. I'll show you. There's a small hole in the bottom of this uh, needle of the needle. So we're filling from this hole. So now, after you open the port, double check to make sure the port is open, and then slowly, slowly draw the solution into the syringe. In this case, it's water. You can see the water coming up from here. It's, it's already it's already up here. So so the, I'm still drawing. If I'm drawing, you you can see the water level will go down in here and here, going down, going down, because I'm drawing the water into the syringe from this port. So one thing you need to pay attention to is you can only draw the solution from this syringe, never to inject the the solution into the prop in, into the uh, problem never inject the solution into the syringe using this using this, uh, to the injector using this syringe you can only draw the solution out okay because it will contam contaminate the syringe so when you fill fill the injection syringe just uh, click the close fill port so now you can see it's closed and then you can you can draw the remaining liquid out of here okay so now this syringe is filled with water. So the next step is 
is two. All this. So make sure it's closed. And generally, put the syringe into the ITC. Okay, it's the same. Put it into the sample cell. Slowly, gently. You don't want to bend the needle. And then it will perfectly fit into the ITC. Okay. Okay, so. Okay, now, okay, now it's to the bottom. It's the working position for the injector syringe. So now you just leave everything here. This, this, this is sometimes your ligand or another sample. You just pour it into the waste. And then you go to the control, control panel. So here is uh, the first step you want to do is to set up the, where you want to save your data. This is a data data file pass. This is in Lefla. It's in, in her uh, in her folder. I will just keep it this way because we're we're not running like something else, just water to water. So after you change the data file pass, you change the setup file pass. This is to uh, save the the experiment setup on on this control panel. And then, and then you change this to your own folder and save user, and make sure it's the correct path. Otherwise, you won't be able to find your data. Okay. And then go back to ITC control. The control panel. What you can ch change is the total number of injections. So this is 30 injections. We can see if we change the numbers here. For example, I change it to 10. 10 injections. The numbers here will change to 10, 10 different injections here. Okay, I'll, I'll just change it to 12. So, we have 12 injections here. Each injection with a volume of 10 microliters, right? So now the total, total volume of injection is 120 microliters. I told you the, the the volume in the uh, syringe is two, somewhere between 270 and 280 microliters, which means if, if it's, we keep it at 10 microliters, we can run like four, uh, 20, 27 to 28 times, right? If, if the, your, your volume is excess, the volume of the syringe is okay because it will stop after all the, uh, all the solution has been injected to the sample cell, okay? Cell temperature, 25, this should consist with the cell temperature here. 25, 12, 25, reference power. Uh, this, this defines how the, the, the data starts, the starting point of the data on the, in the ITC. Usually, usually it won't matter because uh, this depends on the sample, the binding you are studying. If you are studying a exothermic binding or an endothermic binding, you will need different numbers of the starting point of your titration to otherwise your numbers will go to like somewhere below zero or somewhere you don't want it to be but uh, uh, in this case but this this all can be like after after you subtract the the reference data it will, will all be uh, it, it is all okay so you don't need to worry too much about this reference power usually I'll keep it somewhere 10 to 20 I'll to put it to 10 okay so you, you need to make sure that the reference the reference data and your binding data should use the same reference power so that when you subtract the data it won't there won't be any issues so the initial delay is how many seconds you want it to like steering inside the inside the sample cell before you start the titration so usually I'll just keep it to like uh, maybe two minutes two minutes or three minutes or five minutes is fine. So the syringe concentration, the syringe concentration is the concentration of solution in your syringe. And the cell concentration is the concentration of uh, your sample in the cell, in millimolar. So this depends on your cell. We're using water here. So I'll just give it at one. Uh, at one. So this this only matters with, with the final data because the fi in the final data, the X axis is the molar ratio. So the molar ratio is dependent on the concentration you input in here. But you can change it when you're dealing with the data, so you don't need to uh, worry too much about this. Uh, steering speed, just uh, 
it depends on your sample and usually I'll keep it like somewhere between 300 to 400 like 329 300 to 400 this is the name of your titration in this case which is water water to water okay water to water titration so the rest of uh, the feedback mode you keep it in the high and this check this too and then you keep, keep those so for the titration parameters this is the important part so this is this can define the titration of, of each injection now we have 12 injections right uh, usually when we do the uh, titration experiment to uh, get rid of the 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 effect of the, the arrows from the first a few titrations due to the diffusion of the the diffusion of the sample of the solution in the uh, syringe to the sample cell and the, sometimes the air bubbles inside the syringe so the first two we usually give it a different volume a smaller volume for example the first one uh, we want to keep it unique the first select the first unique and then the first one keep it to give it a five a five so the first injection is five microliter the second we also give five and the spacing is six, 60 seconds and the rest we, we can because the water to water titration will keep it to 20 and then apply to rest which will change the rest from 3 to, to, to 12 to 20 okay now this is the parameters we use for this water to water titration if you want to save the save this parameters you can just save run file and to uh, to uh, for example the water to water it will save as a ing file which is the parameters for your injection okay now it's it's all done for the preparation for the rtc experiment for now you will just you can see all the numbers here are black black color which means it's already in uh, equilibrium temperature it's at the 25 degrees celsius like the here we define 25 degrees celsius now we can just start click start to run it now you, you will see here this is spinning which means it's steering inside and the injection will start in uh, two minutes because we have the initial delay for 120 seconds okay so this is the, the IDC experiment part so the other part is about uh, data analysis after after you run your sample you will need to run it twice one time is the, is the solution in syringe the ligand in syringe reaction with your sample binding with your sample and the other time is, the second time is the ligand in the, the same concentration the same ligand in the syringe and to water so now with two samples you can subtract the sample with the binding with your sample with the binding with water so it will get the the, the reaction the binding between your ligand and your sample after subtraction you will usually get a curve a titanium curve like this this is the after after the subtraction titanium curve like this and the way you fit you analyze this data is to fit it using the software this software is just the, this one the micro micro cal llc itc and then the, so in this case i have already fit this but we can do it again just choose the, the model the fitting model is one set of size or two set of size it depends depend on your experiment in this case of one set of size and you can see it will automatically generate a titration curve in here and the only thing you need to do is to click here click here time one time just keep keep click clicking it until it does not change anymore you can see the parameters here it does not change anymore and, and it fits to your your titration result results and then click done and then it will give you the 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 thermodynamic parameters you need for this sample for this experiment okay so uh, I think basically that's all for for an ITC experiment we'll just uh, wait and uh, until after all these experiments are run the so the time of the experiment depending on the spacing of the experiment the initial delay and the time for the equilibrium so you can basically calculate how much time do you need for example in this case we have 12 12 titrations each for one minute which is like 12 minutes and this two min and we have two minutes uh, initial delay here so it's 14 minutes 
for this. Sometimes it will be longer, like 15 minutes or 16 minutes, depending on the uh, equilibrium before the titration started. Okay, so yeah, I think that's all for the experiment. So after everything is done, mm, you need to clean the ITC for following the procedure I showed you at the beginning, like using this to clean the sample cell and the the procedure to clean the syringe is the same procedure we use to fill the syringe. We fill the syringe with water, right? But this time we will we will clean it with the surfactant solution and the water. Just to draw draw the water out, draw the surfactant solution out, clean the syringe. Yeah, and after each time you run the experiment, you will clean it with the surfactant, with water, and if you use any metal ions in your experiment, you will need to uh, clean it with EDTA solution to remove the the metal ions. Yeah, and uh, that's all for the for the ITC experience. Okay, thank you.